This is long-term testing of 12 Eneloop Pro batteries. The low self-discharge characteristics will be in a separate video with all the batteries that I have. But for right now, we're just looking at the Eneloop Pros. I thought I had all of them, but uh, I actually am using a bunch of them and stuff again because the testing completed. But there are 12 batteries. The first four of these I have are from May 2014. So they're definitely over six years old and have at least 100 cycles on them, if not 150 to 200. They've been used quite a bit. The other ones are, they're all date stamped August 2018. I used the Lacrosse Technologies BC1000 charger. The Eneloop Professionals 2550 milliamp hour. And let me just check really quickly to see if the older ones show 25. Yeah, they do. The older ones, these guys, show 2450 milliamp hour minimum, which I believe means that their rated capacity was 2550. Just like these newer ones show minimum 2450 and their actual rated capacity is 2550. I basically run it through four profiles that this has for charging and testing. And the C is the charge current and the D is the discharge current. So it charges up the battery, rests, and then discharges, and then gives a, a value for what the amount of capacity was. I wanna make sure I delineated between the older cells and the newer cells because I was curious if there would be a massive degradation of them being quite a bit older and having way more cycle counts than the newer ones, which are probably in the vicinity of 50 to 75 cycle counts. And you can see that the lowest values that appeared were on the in the lowest test profile. It did, it did occur with the older cells, but all the way across averaged about 2.42 amp hour. As we go up in higher current charging and more importantly, higher current discharging, as one might expect, because this is the pro line, they're designed to be able to have higher surge current capacity. So uses in like camera flashes and things like that where there's a demand for an increased amount of current. And these are really kind of designed for that as opposed to maintaining super high capacity at very low current discharge rates. So at 250 milliamp hour, everything really comes up. And even the cells that were six and a half years old, all were at 2.58 amp hours or higher, which is really impressive. And then you can kind of see that consistency across the 2018 ones for an average of 2.62. As it increased up to 350 milliamp hour discharge rate, the average continued to climb to 2.68. Finally, once we hit about 500 milliamp hours, that declined a little bit to 2.63, but there were several cells in the 350 milliamp hour discharge that went up to 2.7 amp hour. So in that middle range, these cells go way higher than the 2.55 amp hour claim. And even if you go back to cells that are many years old, still exceeding the 2.55 milliamp hour claim and handily over the 2.45 minimum value. So let's look at the graph. The dark blue bars are for the ones that are the six and a half year old cells. And then the lighter blue bars are for the ones that are for the two year old cells. You can see there's not much deviation except at the lower current discharge. So that 100 milliamp current discharge, you can see that there's the most amount of variation there between the cells. So then we look at the 250 milliamp hour discharge, 350 milliamp hour discharge and 500 milliamp our discharge and it comes way up to where you can look at the 2.55 amp hour line and only the two cells fall below that for the 350 milliamp hour test that was the the older cells and one cell falls below that in the 500 milliamp hour test which is amazing they all are above 2.45 amp hour these are really great cells what impresses me the most is not that they are meeting the capacity, the 2.55 amp hour capacity, where many other cells we've tested have not even met that level, but they exceed it by a healthy margin. Even when you start going up into higher discharge currents, even at lower discharge currents, they still do a pretty good job. It just goes to show if you're gonna buy a set of these things, 
and you're looking at the price and going, wow, these are so expensive. It's for a reason because they really do perform well. And with even a large sample size, like 12 samples is a statistically significant set of samples. Instead of taking one of these, putting it in a charger and going, ah, it did all right. Because you can see, you look at one cell and it might be the number one cell or the number two cell or even nine or 11 in the chart that eh, just, Maybe that maybe those cells weren't cycled enough, or they you know whatever they're having a bad day, whatever it is. It's why it's important to take as large of a sample size as you possibly can without spending hundreds of dollars on batteries. I'm just using all the batteries that I have. Anyways, that's the Antelope Pro testing all the batteries that I've got spanning over six years, some new, some older, and they all pretty much show that they're pretty damn good. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.